Hello, this is Alan with Collecting Maddox. I'm just going to go over uh, a trip I recently took out on uh, September 30th. Got to go out to the Washington Nationals game where they went to Truist Park against the Braves. Obviously, I went there more for the Braves than the, the Nationals, but a uh, really great experience. Really enjoyed the park. So this is kind of just another one of my park reviews and probably my last one for the season because I probably will not be going to any playoff games. Uh, just based off of kind of where everything is at and kind of that I already just took a trip to Atlanta, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, the Braves had already clinched by that point in time, and I was getting a little worried that they may not uh, be putting too much effort into it, but it was still kind of one of those bucket list type things that I wanted to actually go down to, to Truist Park as well. Uh, so entering in, kind of got to see a lot of the statues on the outside, uh, there's the nice Phil Necro kind of right as you enter third base and then the Warren spawn over on the right hand side you can see that's over on the left left uh, left field side kind of tucked away a little bit more so is the Bobby Cox statue and there was really just myself and one other person that was very similar to my age and they were also extremely interested in seeing that so there was my myself and uh, one other gentleman were kept on taking pictures of uh, ourselves with Bobby Cox. So you could see he was very excited regarding the 90s baseball, 90s, 2000s base, uh, Braves team. So really great to see that uh, somebody else was also kind of on a trip to see a lot of this. So decided to wander around the battery after that. Um, so a nice, a great area just to go get food, get drinks. Um, my wife and I decided to stop and get ice cream because it was pretty hot. So we kind of wanted to wait and to get food while we were actually inside. But lots of fun live music. There's the fountains there. Lots of uh, great stuff. But finally ended up going into the right field gate. And right as, kind of, as you enter, you can see that they have the starting lineups. I was really excited that Spencer Strider was pitching that day. Uh, being a pitching nerd and kind of enjoying that aspect and of baseball more so than uh, the batting. I obviously enjoy the offensive part, part, but I get really excited about seeing great pitchers. Uh, but yeah, as we kind of wandered back, uh, really started to focus a lot of my time kind of at the beginning before everybody got there was uh, going through a lot of the Hall of Fame or Wall of Fame area that they had. Obviously lots and lots of Hank Aaron memorabilia. They had the jerseys, they had a bunch of different jerseys around and the artwork of the 755 bats were just amazing. Um, probably not as much stuff regarding Warren Spahn as what I thought there would be, but again, uh, probably not as well regard. I mean, definitely like pitching is always kind of one of those things that's not as well regarded as what hitting is. So um, really just a lot of uh, pitching nerds like myself that really kind of were excited about the, the war seeing the Warren Spawn um, information. And then definitely uh, fanboyed out all over the place uh, when it came to Greg Maddox. So there's all the Cy Young winners that uh, they had listed there. So again, you can see Warren Spahn and then the ones the run by Greg Maddox as well. So it was really great to see all of those. Um, and then there's the fountains that have like right above it where they have all of the, the numbers. And then also kind of a list of the different gold glove winners. Obviously, and Andrew Jones and uh, Greg Maddox are very heavily uh, represented here, but really exciting to see. Really exciting to see there. And then you obviously have the, um, kind of over on your right-hand side, you have the banner of the 1995 World Championships, which is right next to the Greg Maddox uh, pillar there, which was kind of a great view. And then there's always the, kind of the enshrinement uh, picture of when they actually went into Cooperstown between Greg Maddox, Bobby Cox, and Tom Glavin. So just a great, great photo that they had together. Really enjoyed seeing that, and then obviously had to get uh, the glove of Greg Maddox as well. 
um, and then searched around outside for the 1995 World Championship ring. So they had these of each of the World Championship rings for each year that they had and kind of wanted to search out for the 1995 because that was the one that was probably the most uh, special to me. That's when I was really, really into baseball when I was a kid and just very, very, very clearly remember that series um, between the Indians. So that was a lot of a lot of fun to find out. Um, the game, I'll just talk about it quick because if nothing else, you can go always go read it. But yeah, it was the one on September 30th against the Nationals. Strider had a rough start, settled down, kind of very similar Strider fashion, you know, has a rough first inning and then settled down after that. Um, ended up uh, breaking John Smoltz strikeout record, but it was so it was really great to actually be able to see that in in person. And then Ozuna hit a hit a home run to just that just kind of set pushed the uh, or when it was still looking like the Braves might not win, hit a home run, and then from that point on, it just seemed like oh now the Braves are gonna lock it down and win this game and that's basically what happened so it was a lot of a lot of excitement um very very i would say very liberal with uh the fireworks at that day i kind of felt like it was like oh we have this uh firework budget and uh we forgot to use it throughout the year so so we can still it felt like kind of that whole uh aspect and then maybe that's just me going at it from a um viewing kind of one of the end game or one of the very last games, but it was uh, every time like Strider would get a strikeout after that point in, t in time, like after he would beat the record, they would shoot off fireworks again. Uh, so it seemed very, uh, very liberal at that point in time, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. Great stadium, uh, super easy to get around. And I mean, this was packed. I mean, it was a sold out crowd, so very, very easy. Uh, if if it's ever on your bucket list to go, I would say it's definitely worth it. Probably one of the top stadiums. I, I would definitely say top tier stadium. I mean that that and Wrigley, I would say are probably my two top stadiums that I didn't go to many this year, but uh, top two that I've gone to uh, relatively recently. I'm trying to get around to a few more that are locally around here in the Chicago area, but that's kind of my goal for next year. I'll kind of start planning that out. I kind of want to be, be more focused around when are the Braves coming to town and kind of focus on when that is not, hey, it's this weekend and we can actually go to a game. Let's do it. So I think staying more focused this year, this coming year is what, what we're going to do. But continuing within the playoffs, everything's been very exciting so far. Obviously, the first game didn't really go the Braves way. But I can't say anything. Strider pitched how he was supposed to pitch, and the bats just didn't happen. Uh, second game, that the end to it, just amazing. And I, I don't know how you can be a Phillies fan and ever, ever blame um, Bryce Harper for what he did. He that, that was an amazing catch by Michael Harris and just a heads-up play by Austin Riley. Just, just an amazing way to end the game. But I thought overall just kind of watching the game it was uh it was getting a little frustrating because it was like man I, I can't see how the Braves are gonna win this game and then to sneak it out like that just a just an amazing amazing game to watch so hopefully you enjoyed the video uh, appreciate you watching and go Braves <laughs>